Liza could come, all these people could come, and they'll, they'll, they all can then present their signatures, and Bob will know, okay, all of these signatures are correct, but I don't know who gave me which one, so we use, we'll, you'll see how the, we use this in the protocol to get some privacy. But um, this is kind of the structure, there's a single coordinator, many clients connected to it, they can be Core Lightning, they could be LND, they could be Bitcoin D, or anyone who implements the, uh, the protocol. So it starts first, we just register inputs, so we have Alice here, she needs to, you know, she wants to do a coin join. So she says, here's my inputs, I'm gonna be um, you know, spending these UTXOs, and um, that where she wants to send them money is gonna be blinded. So she'll, that'll be that first case here, or here where um, Bob has already given her the nonce, but Alice will then blind um, that address as the message. And then she gives the change output for the extra stuff. And, um, now the, the coordinator needs to validate a bunch of stuff to make sure that you know, she's not malicious and trying to d DDoS attack or you know, steal money. So the, the coordinator verifies that like, the, you know, these are actually real UTXOs. You need to verify that Alice um, uh, gave her a valid proof that she does own these, um, that they are energy registered and that they're confirmed, and then that they're at the correct type because we, you know, um, we don't want all the inputs of these transactions to be different types they're all the, you know, if they're all taproot, it makes it much cleaner and you know, harder to track who's doing what. And then we also want um, the minimal amount of UTXOs selected, so we don't want her to come in and just you know, give like, all of her UTXOs and then just like, get a free consolidation, because um, it's kind of just like hurting the overall protocol. Um, so yeah, so if they validate all that, now this is good, honest party. We'll give you them that blinded signature. And then later, once the, the round is ready to happen, Alice will then, um, under a new Tor identity, give that address, um, un the, the unblinded address to the coordinator and that unblinded signature. So this allows the coordinator to verify that this address has been registered by someone, but because they don't know who actually the signature was for, there's no some party is giving me the signature. So it could have been Alice, it could have been Bob or Carol, whoever registered for the coin join. Just someone gave this address. So now the coordinator can't link that the address to the inputs. So it um, gives you like a nice, you don't really need to trust coordinator with your privacy kind of properties. But they need to do some validation. Again, Alice could be trying to steal money or do a denial of service. They just basically verified, okay, this is a signature that I gave for this round. And um, you just verify as well that the address is correct type so they're not screwing with the rounds. So, you know, if this is a taproot round, we're verifying that they gave me a taproot address. Um, and eventually, once everyone registers their outputs, we need to sign that transaction. So the coordinator constructs the PSBT, sends it to every person that's registered. And now, um, you know, Alice doesn't want to trust the coordinator. And, you know, maybe the coordinator is just sending all the money to themselves. So Alice needs to verify a bunch of stuff. And as well, she wants to practice protect her privacy. So she verifies that all these inputs and outputs are the correct type and that they're not um, trying to screw her over by like, you know, putting in random stuff. Alice verifies that her inputs and her outputs are included. Um, something I always think about, like, I have a comments in my code is like, should Alice even verify their inputs are included? Like, I mean, she'll take the free money. But um, we do for now just, you know, make sure there's no bugs. And as well, she needs to verify that transaction can actually be broadcast you don't want it to like, you know, do this stuff and then, the, you know, the fee rate's like zero so they can't be broadcast and, you know, you just wasted your time. So you verify that it's like a valid lock time. There's nothing like over the dust limit and, you know, the fee rate's good. But if all that's good, then Alice will, um, first, she'll send that, if she's opening Lightning Channel, she'll val validate it with her channel counterpart to be like, I'm going to open the channel with this transaction. Is that cool? If they give her the okay, she'll sign it and then send it back to the coordinator. And then once everyone has signed this transaction, the coordinator can then um, create the fully signed transaction and they'll broadcast it and send it to all the peers and they can broadcast it themselves as well just to you know, get it everywhere. And that's kind of the completion of the round. Um, so what does that give us? Um, because of this blind signature stuff we were doing for registration, the coordinator can't link inputs to outputs. So that lets us really have this nice property where you know, it, it was like something like a custodial mixer. You're, you're really trusting your privacy with that first uh, that mixer because they could they know where the money's going to. But with this, 
you never have to uh, trust them with your privacy because the, the worst case is like in this first case, they know which UTXOs you registered together, but that's you know not the end of the world because uh, normally you kind of lose that with chain analysis anyways. And they can't link your inputs to outputs, so um, eventually you know if you just register one input for like a remix, then you should be safe. And you're never giving up custody of your funds because it's just a single transaction that you sign and you know send to whatever address you use validate. You're never like giving up money to someone else. You're always in control of your own keys and never have to like trust anyone there. And the coordinator um, can protect against an Alva service by just banning UTXOs that are bad actors. So you know if Alice comes in and like in this phase, this sends me like you know UTXOs that don't exist or a bad uh, address or in this phase she uh, she doesn't sign. Then we say, okay, your your UTXOs are banned, so you know you can't come back and denial service attack this thing a while, um, again. Um, that sounds pretty complicated. Like you know, I don't know how to implement all that. Well, you don't need to. We have a nice, hopefully nice looking GUI that handles it all for you. But um, that's kind of the idea. Does it work? Um, so we've done a one mainnet one, so it kind of works. Um, done a few on testnet. Works on reg test. Great, but um, there are some challenges that I want to get into. Not some of them specific to Vortex. Some of them just I don't know if they are solvable problems. Um, the first is Tor. Tor sucks. Um, it's very slow and unreliable. And the biggest problem is it can cause honest peers to look malicious. Where you know if, if in like this case where Alice is like you know she needs to sign and she doesn't sign because her Tor saga got disconnected. Well, now the coordinator's going to think she's a bad actor and ban her, but it's like, well, no, sorry, I just have shitty internet. Or, you know, maybe I have great internet, but Tor just sucks. So there are some solutions. Um, I mean, you can use ClearNet. Um, the problem is with ClearNet, you kind of will now have some trust with the coordinator with your privacy, where if the same IP address registered this input and this output, now they could correlate it. Um, so another solution could be I2P. The thing is, though, it's not a total drop in replacement. And um, it has some slightly different properties than Tor, but it could be a solution. Um, but as you know, not way less used than Tor, so you won't have as great an enemy set and stuff. Another problem is um, something I realized after doing the mainnet test is something called max pending channels. So most Lightning nodes only allow, um, at least by default, one pending channel from another node. So if I attempt to open a channel to you, um, I can't attempt to open another channel to you until that you know whole thing either you're like it's denied and cleaned out or if it's like confirmed. So this can cause a problem during blame rounds. So basically, like if a if a peer comes in and acts dishonest, like say they don't sign the PSBT, what we need to do is basically we redo the whole round to figure out who was the dishonest peer, and then um, we just exclude them and do the round correctly. The problem is you end up Reinitiating that channel with your your uh, the person you're trying to open a channel to, so you can o go over this max p pending channel limit. Um, so it's kind of a hard problem to solve. I'm not really sure what the correct solution is. Um, potentially, it could be moving to interactive TX, like the Lightning dual funded um, channel protocol. I still need to research this, but you know LND doesn't support it, so it would greatly reduce the user base and thus anonymity set of the project. And I'm not sure with Interactive TX you could get that privacy from the coordinator that we do get with zero link. So it's something, it's, it'll, it'll be a massive trade off. So still need to research that. I mean, maybe we just do some advocate, advocacy and get everyone to raise their pending channel, pending, pending channel limit, but we'll see. Yeah, it's mostly a good DDoS protection thing. Uh, I was actually, I talked to Lalu about it at Tabconf. He's like, basically, like, I could just, you know, open a thousand channels to you, and now you need to watch all these UTXOs, and you know, you could just, you know, eat their DB and uh, CPU time. The thing is, though, it's not a total like it doesn't really fix anything because I could just spin up a thousand Lightning nodes and do one channel to you anyways. But you know, it's a little harder. But yeah, um, as well, another big problem is the post mix part of this, where LND and C Lightning really don't have good post mix tools. They just kind of have a a basic wallet because you know they spend all their time on the lightning stuff. So like something that Samurai does really well is like your post mix UTXOs go to a completely separate account, so you, you, it's very hard to spend them together. Um, so for Vortex to have something like this, it would need to become a full node manager software where it's like basically feature equivalent to something like Thunderhub or Lightning or Ride the Lightning. 
But like, even if we did all that, and it's like, if the user comes in and then uses something like Ride the Lightning instead of Vortex, they could accidentally just ruin their privacy by like merging UTXOs they shouldn't. And even if you're like a perfect user, if you use something like anchor, anchor channels, which are like default in LND now, you could accidentally ruin your privacy because things, um, anchor channels, what they do is um, if your channel gets like force closed and you need to bump the fee, it just picks a random UTXO and bumps the fee with that. So you accidentally could be associating the wrong UTXO with the channel and then um, you know, ruins your privacy further. So there are some problems there that could like um, really big foot guns and like, you know, it's, you can kind of solve it, but not in the worst case. So it's another hard problem, but you know, we can still move forward in that regard. Well, the problem is it's a force close, so you can't really, um, you, know, you don't have the keys for it, so you need to, you can only, um, I guess you can maybe force, you could coin join the, the coins that, um, like if all of your coins in your wallet were coin joined, maybe you're okay because now this random coin join fund is being used to bump it, but if you had non-coin join funds, then, in, like, cause you don't get to pick which UTXO is used to bump your fee, like, out. L&D or C Lightning will do it automatically. So it could just pick the wrong UTXO. Maybe it picks like your toxic change. And now it bumps your channel with that, and now you just kind of like got wrecked. So it's you know maybe if um, so like a solution around here would be like you know if we had these like separate accounts, you could say like okay this is my anchor channel bumping account, and this is all like you know my post mixed UTXOs. Then then it's maybe safe. But the problem is like L&D and C Lightning really don't have support at all for things like that. Um, so. It's a hard problem to solve. I have a yeah. Uh, what do you recommend uh, instead of running uh, RTO? Well, so, I mean, like, Ride the Lightning and Thunderhub are great. The problem is um, if you're coin joining these funds, it's not going to be aware that you coin joined previously. So you could, like, you know, you could do all this perfect, like, coin join stuff and then go into RTL and hit send, and it just, like, sends it without knowing any of that stuff and merge the wrong UTXOs you don't want. Or you know, just opens channels with the wrong UTXOs. You don't want you know, you can't control it. So it's hard to control things like that. So you would like Vortex would need to become this full man node manager software to handle everything. But like you know, I use RTL and Thunderhub interchangeably. So you know, a user might use Vortex and RTL interchangeably and screw themselves. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you could add, like, I think RTL does have coin control, but the problem is, like, it's not going to be aware of, like, the coin joins that you did in Vortex. It, it won't know, like, you know, the anonymity that you have saved in your database and stuff like that because it's separate. So it still isn't a total solution. Um, but yeah. And it, huh? Yeah, I guess you could do that. Um, you, know, but, you know, then it becomes, you know, now I gotta start contributing to RTL and stuff, and I don't want to write JavaScript code. <laughs> uh, another problem, though, is I wrote it in Scala, and um, I love Scala, but also the main library I built on just totally rugged everyone. Where um, they're changing their license now to not be open source, yeah. so um, yeah, Akka, which is like the main networking library, like every Scala project uses. Yeah, so um, like uh, one thing that like it really pissed me off is like they don't have support for mutual TLS, which is needed for um, C Lightning's gRPC. And I have like a bunch of issues on, on adding it. And now it's like even if they add support, I can't upgrade to the latest version because it's no longer open source or like you know the license is different. So that was sucks. But also Scala is like you know it's hard to make like releasable binaries for like every application. So I'd like to rewrite it in Rust, but um, we'll see. Um, so that was most of it. Some of you guys walked in towards the end, but yeah. Um, any questions? Or oh, yeah, Max. Do non-Vortex users join the Vortex fund? Um, what do you mean? Uh, like, uh, can so someone not opening a channel with Vortex be in the same coin join transactions as the Vortex users that open the channel? Yeah, so that's something I got in before you walked in, but yeah, so the idea no, no worries. Um, where's my channel? Here we go. So yeah, so like the the dream is like you know once we have taproot channels, we can have um, basically every kind of use case in a single coin join. Where now because all the outputs look the same, so you could have someone opening a channel, 
It looks the exact same as someone doing a self-spend, same as someone doing a payment, or you know, someone could be issuing a Taro asset for all we care. It's all in the same coin join because Taproot lets it look all the same, and you know, um, the protocol works the same way. So yeah. Um, I mean, we're just using zero link, so the same way like Wasabi 1.0 or Samurai works, where um, you know we have multiple um, like coordinators for different amounts and stuff. But yeah, it's all unified amount. And what's the for yeah, yeah. See, so yeah, I think like right now the main net one I have set up is five million sats, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a hard problem because. You kind of like what's like you know if we're doing this dream of like everything in the same you know we have like where to go all these things like in the same coin join okay it's like okay well a, a channel open if I'm doing five million sats you know it's kind of a small channel on average um, it's not something like you know that like a business might use um, you know like at the Bitcoin company we open like you know huge channels of people so like a five million sat channel might be useless to us uh, but you know, if you're doing a self-spend, you're trying to get your own privacy. Like that might that's probably like a good amount because, you know, you don't you, you don't want to like this like if we had like one Bitcoin rounds now it's like you need to be like you know fairly wealthy to be able to do a coin join, and then you know something even like a Taro asset issuance like you want those to be pretty small because it's you know most of the value is in the Taro asset, not the Bitcoin. So it's kind of hard to unify all these cases with the amounts, but um, I don't know I I picked five million stats out of a hat, but hopefully that works. But yeah. All right, anything else? Well, thanks for coming.